السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الكريم. Welcome back to this series, the Masjid, or the role of the Masjid in the West. Even Alhamdulillah. Today we're going to be continuing our uh, very lively discussion with our brother Jem Shady over here. Salam <laughs> alaikum. How are you doing there, brother? Let's shake hands for a change. Why not? I know you've. We've, we've introduced ourselves so many times, you're probably getting quite sick of it, but never get sick of spreading the salams, ease your way to the paradise, like sure. Rasulullah and says. Right, so, on and upwards, as they say. Yep. So we were discussing the different methodology, the different approaches yep. to dawah, yep. but what about what actually goes in on inside the, 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 the masjid, inside as, it, as it were? <laughs> okay. Typically. So, typically, what would happen is, so when you would have uh, someone who comes to the masjid, very often we like to give them a tour because you know mm. we've built these huge grandiose mosques we look at the dome look at the mm. minaret you know and i don't know somehow somewhere along the way we expect them to say wow mashallah i like the curvature ashhadu an la ilaha illallah you know <laughs> I don't we pay 25000 pounds for that mashallah <laughs> you know subhanallah is is I, I don't know what's going on but no generally we will take the person on the mosque tour <laughs> Uh, it's funny shock it's them, true. awe and shock, shock yeah. and awe, isn't it? That's, yes. that's pretty much what it is. It's like, look, we're, we're not so. Do you know what it is? Hey, we're but hold so, on, you can't do that with those, you know, those new <laughs> neo-colonialist uh, um, onions, the green onions the on green. top. They can't do that with them, surely. Do you, of course they can. No, they can't. You, it's like, look at me. Look, this is the inside of what a green onion looks. Green like. onion looks like. Oh, look. It's got La ilaha illallah written on it. It's a miracle. Yeah, it's, well, I mean, from their point of view, it's got something written on it that they, they don't know and they can't understand. You know, and the funny thing is, I bet a lot of Muslims can't even read it as well because yeah. the style of calligraphy is, it's oh, like, yes. right? They're very, trying to work it out. Difficult, yes. You know, in fact, actually, a funny story related to this. I was watching mm. uh, a well-known da'i on TV and he was presenting a story that he gave... A, um, actually, funny story. Um, I was watching uh, a well-known da'i explain that uh, he had received some calendars as uh, gifts uh, from uh, another religious denomination. And they had some very artistic, very beautiful looking uh, calligraphy on it. So one of his Muslim friends uh, thought it was quite nice and asked if he could have it. So he said, yeah, sure, keep it. It's a gift. A short while later, he asked him, he says, oh, how do you like the calendar? He said, oh, wow, it's, it's amazing. It's really beautiful. He says, did you even read it? And he's like, no. He says, read it. Why don't you? And he looked at it. And rather than saying, <coughs> Rabbana atina fid dunya, it actually said, which is Rabbana, which is our Lord. It said, Abbana, i.e. Mm -hmm. our father. Mm -hmm. It was from the Christians, but it was made mm -hmm. to look exactly like, you know, Arabic scripts and things like that. So, yeah, you know, right, yeah. unfortunately, uh, Many of us Muslims will look at the calligraphy, mm. we'll assume it's something Quranic, we'll assume it's something deep, but we, yeah. in reality, we don't know and we don't care, mm. unfortunately. So it's, it's sad times. Um, mm. So if we don't care, why do we expect the non-Muslims to care, mm. you know, when we show them around? Quite. But, <coughs> I mean, generally, yeah, we'll take them on a, on a, a tour of the, the masjid. We'll show them this is the, you know, mimbar where the person makes his <coughs> speech with. And this is the wudu area, which if you know Masajid, mm. if you know how us Muslims are, it's usually, you don't want to take people. It's a no-go zone. It's, it's, it's definitely. Health and def safety. <laughs> definitely. So why, brothers and sisters, please do not show them those places until they've been thoroughly cleaned. You know, we need to plan these things in advance. Mm. And we'll just give them a copy of the Quran. Of course, it'll be in Arabic. They don't speak Arabic. So it's like tough luck, you know. But, yeah, but you uh, don't want to, we want to make sure that, that uncle. Yeah. After Fajr, his uh, you know extremely hot curry yep. is not in there expelling the contents of his throat whilst <laughs> <laughs> visiting there's the wudu khana. There's that, or you know the uh, the other favorite as well is that same uncle when he sees when he sees women coming through and if they haven't if he hasn't been forewarned even if they're covered up yeah. or not why are there women in the men's section <laughs> going nuts going absolutely nuts. oh my god I've seen a woman my eyes my eyes put out my eyes. I mean <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous it's like they never went outside to the <laughs> marketplace right no, no, no. <laughs> the same woman probably serves him in the supermarket or something like fine no problem hi how's your day everything like that he may even be selling it. alcohol in his shop as well subhanallah subhanallah it's, anyway it's the, that's the, another the, story the, the double standards, it's, it's mm. amazing. And the point is, none of this is conducive to bringing the person towards Islam. I mm. have yet to hear one story, just one story, of someone <coughs> who looked at Islamic architecture or looked mm. at a masjid and thought, 
wow, this must be the truth. I'm going to accept Islam now. So obviously there's something very, very fundamentally wrong with this approach. Fine. It's fine to invite people in, you know, just to, to break the ice and to yeah. make them feel welcome. Say, look, this yeah. is a masjid. This is all that goes on here because you never know. Thanks to, you know, some of the news channels, people might think, you know, we have tribal war dances or something mm -hmm. like that going on in here. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so it's fine to invite them in to say, look, this is actually what goes on. Um, but in terms of calling them to Islam, in terms of being that beacon of light that we were talking about, the, uh, that's not sufficient just to say, look, this is what goes on here. Because all you've established is what you're doing. You haven't given yourself a role. I mean, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, if that masjid were to close down, w has anything lost? Mm -hmm. If the community mm -hmm. haven't lost anything, then you really have to question what was the point of the masjid being there in the first place, yeah. if not to benefit the community. Yeah. yeah. So that, I think well, that's the challenge, isn't it? Well, here, that, here lies um, the challenge. Here lies the, yeah, exactly mm -hmm. for for the, the masjid. They need to build to make themselves part of that community. We're, we're in uh, a non-Islamic community. And we need to integrate ourselves with society. We, we can't mm. segregate ourselves off. This was never the practice of the Sahaba. This was never the, the commandment of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu You know, we're supposed to be the torchbearers for all of humanity. <coughs> it's mm. our job to go out there and to tell them. We can't expect for them to come uh, and to ask us for it or you know, to make those types mm -hmm. of inquiries. So I think these are generally, you know, when we're very apathetic towards the da'wah, especially mm. in the masjid, where we, we don't actually call people to, to Islam. I've also unfortunately witnessed other kinds of events where, um, whereby a fancy dinner has been organized. And we've invited, you know, local <coughs> uh, celebrities, for example, teachers and governors and MPs and whatever have you. Police. So I've also witnessed, unfortunately, some other types of events where we'll invite, for example, uh, the teachers, police, MPs, you know, people, respectable people within the local community. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll have a fanciful dinner for them. Mm. And the entire function or purpose of the evening is just to tell them how much we love them, that we are Muslims, we don't mean them any harm, and almost mm. like, you know, you're like our pets, we would never harm you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, like, it's, just <laughs> but it's true. The, yeah. the, I mean, the reality is we don't call them to Islam. <laughs> oh, you know, yeah. we don't call them to Islam. We don't say, look, this is why we're so different. This is why we believe what we believe, yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. It's just... We're very uh, apologetic towards them and that person at the end of the day They're gonna leave with their belly full because we mm -hmm. would have fed them cuisine from you know all far-flung corners of the earth mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, hopefully it's not it's gonna stay in their belly and won't come back out but <laughs> <laughs> But that and plus, you know, they would have had a very nice speech from some kind of a speaker or a presenter but they didn't really go away with any new knowledge other than, oh, mm. okay, fine, so these Muslims are just like normal people. Yeah. Um, so again, I think we're missing a huge trick if, yeah. if we're not taking advantage of these, of these situations. And especially when we also do things like we invite the, the, the notable people of the public, like the teachers and the policemen. Yeah. We should be responsible, or every masjid should be responsible for the people within its vicinity <laughs> it's completely and I, I would love for someone to, to to try and challenge me on this but i find it completely unacceptable that a non-muslim could live within a stone's throw of a masjid yeah and no one has approached him and told him about islam mm. what kind of you know dawah is this and you know think of how many people well, what kind of islam is this? exactly right? well i mean think about how many people mm. are could have passed by that person's door every single day, every single week on their way to Juma, mm. and w no one took the time to go and well, say. I think if you if you you were to do, and this is very very pertinent for this whole discussion, is if if you were to do a survey um, of let's say forty neighbours either yep. side of any masjid in Western Europe, I think the majority of them, probably ninety nine percent of them would find that they'd never been engaged with mm. at all by the Muslims in the congregation or the Indeed. shura or the imam. And that's unfortunately a very, very sad reality that 
<coughs> again, we're just missing a trick. We're, we're not, the masjid is just simply not performing the role that it needs to yeah. perform. It's, it's not being that light. All, all it's simply <coughs> doing is, we're calling it a masjid. In reality, it's mm. just basically a place where you put your forehead to the ground and that's it, you know, up, down, to the mm. ground, back to town. And then, you know, if you, can, if you look at the, the comparative issue of Rasulullah SAW opening the ma masjid in Medina when he's, he's migrated, yeah. year, I, I use the term ground zero, because <laughs> it's zero, yeah. ground zero, which and he found the grounds, yep. started at zero, Hijri, calendar, yep. and he did not go and look for a house for himself mm. to relax in. Indeed. He went to go and find a place to establish Islam in, so he could establish Islam in the Arabian Peninsula, and with the Byzantines, and with the Persians, and with all the other people in the world. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. And then we have this juxtaposition of that, yep. compared to this almost neo-colonialist approach of, I'm all right, Jack. Um, this is our land, our masjid, our religion, yep. and you leave it alone. Pretty and then when they yeah. complain, because we haven't been outreaching, yep. well, hell breaks loose. <laughs> that's, yeah. uh, you know, that's, that's actually true because another reason why people will complain, because they just don't know. Th mm. There's a lot of ignorance about Islam, and unfortunately we're in a situation, we're letting other, people's, mm. other people <coughs> do the speaking for us. We're letting the mm. news or the media or non-Muslims oh, yes. yeah, dictate yes. and tell other people yeah. what our own religion is. We've got MPs saying, <laughs> you know, oh, you know, you Muslims, you're stuck in the past. You need to update. And we've got we've got Muslims that are calling for this as well. You know, this. Is, oh, Subhanallah. We haven't got much time left for this uh, side of the show. We're going to be coming back pretty soon. But mm. yeah, I mean, you're right. Um, uh, who effectively runs the shop window? This is the is question. It, it's the worst kept shop window. It's, it's the best the worst, dressed, but the oh, worst. It's the best product yeah. with the worst shop window. Indeed. And not only that, I mean, we could use a, a you know, we'll use it after the break, actually. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about this before we talk about some very difficult questions that we need okay. to address. Okay. Agreed? Agreed. Are you up for it? Uh, definitely. Let's You're up go. for the challenge. Let's Good. Go. But only if they come back. Uh, they're going to come back, don't worry. All right, worry. inshallah. With All your right. face, they'll always come back. <laughs> Okay, my brothers and sisters, come back after the break, like he says. Wake up and smell the coffee. So I hope you had a nice cup of coffee there, and you did smell the coffee, and we're back straight into it. Gem shade. So, <coughs> what's next? Well, I think uh, let's address the reason why people aren't actually engaging in the dawah. And I think we already covered this in a previous episode, which is people, I don't think, they use this cop-out excuse, they don't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a fair excuse if you consider the variety of questions because there's a lot of questions to ask. I mean, we could, if we were to sit down and discuss, for example, difficult questions, I'm sure we would be here for a while. Um, and that's the problem, really. There's a general level of ignorance uh, that we don't know how to deal mm. with these questions. And that's the first thing that we need to address. We need some kind of a methodology in terms uh, to take us through the whole our process. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, just to refine that point, let's let's go through a few examples of what happens uh, when non-Muslims try to engage with us. Mm. So, examples of questions would be for. Well, I mean, you know, your um, you all Muslims are very very nice people seemingly, but why do you kill people in the name of your religion? Yeah. It's happening all the time. 9/11, yeah. 77 Madrid bombing, Bali. I mean, where do you guys get off on it? Yep. Uh, that's a very, very valid one. There's, there's many others. Like, um, why have you got five, four wives? Why yeah. do you, why, and, and the women can't, wear, uh, can't manage to marry more than one husband. Yep. But you can marry four women. Equ inequality, gender, you know, you're sexist. I love this question. Oh, you love uh, that I, one, do you? Do you know oh, do you love the one about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim. I start by seeking refuge from, from the shaitan. Oh, that he married Aisha when she was six. How on earth is this possible? Mm -hmm. Again. And, oh, another one, another popular one, which is, um, um, what kind of Muslim are you? Are you Sunni or are you Shia or are you Wahhabi? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's another one. 
<laughs> you know, or you guys, you, you, you beat women up, you do. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That and you incredible. love it. Yeah, you beat women. And you beat your women, don't you? Yeah. Oh, you chap, chop hands off and you stone, it's barbaric Islam. Yeah, there's you, Yes. Shall I go on? You can, yeah, why not? <laughs> I mean, the prop, the, I mean, all <clears> jokes <throat> aside, <clears throat> the, the scary thing is, these are actual real questions. These mm. are s real questions, and people are not asking these questions just to have a poke. Mm. From my own experience, when people are asking these questions, it seems that the, these are real serious issues that people just don't understand. And unfortunately, well, we'll, we'll come to what the solution is after this, inshallah. But let's, let's try and explore a couple <laughs> more, because I'm enjoying this, actually. No, you're, you're, you're liking this, aren't you? I yeah? am liking this, actually. You're liking this. The thing is, because I've, I've mm. got various responses in my mind, and some of these questions yeah. I absolutely love. I mean, I'm just going to cheat a little bit and go back to the, to the one about um, the four, the marrying the four wives, because... But it actually can be more than four, because I understand you can marry as many as you like. <laughs> That's why, I mean, you can do what you yeah, like. I mean, yeah. maybe I should become Muslim. <laughs> no, <sir. Stop laughs> no, I mean, uh, there's many others. Th there are many, many others. And subhanAllah, what can we say? The problem, I mean, let's discuss w what the issue is. Unfortunately, when we try to answer these questions, in many cases, the person answering may not have enough knowledge uh, and he may end up doing more damage than good especially if he explains it wrong. He may also explain it in a way that is satisfactory to the Western audience, mm -hmm. but it's not true according to Islam. Mm -hmm. I, he may, uh, for example, let's just say with, with the, the polygyny example, yes, it is an unfair system and things like that. Yeah. As soon as you've mentioned that, you, you, you're kind of criticizing the ruling of Allah. Yeah. You know, fine, what they want you to say is unfair, mm -hmm. and if you've appeased them by saying it's unfair, You've kind of basically said, right, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has implemented something that is that's not fair for both people. So, yeah, again, it comes back down to ignorance. There, there are many, many pitfalls that you can take. But the worst one of all is, regardless of how you answer the question, you haven't ca necessarily called that person to Islam. Because, again, I don't know of any particular instances where someone's accepted, oh, okay, fine, so Islam is fair towards the treatment of women. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. It, it, you know, it just doesn't work like that or yeah. at least it hasn't worked like that in in my experience uh, from everything no, it might it might inspire them to go off and read a little bit more it about might, the topic but, but where are they going to read it from gem shade Sheikh google which Sheikh is google and it's back to the old shop window issue who's running the shop window exactly. like i say bro exactly would you allow your most vehement competitor mm. within your trade for example if you you, you, you're good at cooking curry and you're selling it to the public. You have a, a restaurant, yep. you know, like Loho Karahi. Yeah. yeah, like you probably do anyway, you know, I'm just trying to stereotype you. But, <laughs> um, you know, Loho Karahi is yep. there and then uh, there's a chap around the, call, uh, the corner called uh, Masala Cafe. Yep. Yes. So my question to you is, would you give your shop over to him for a week? It's ludicrous because yeah. what's he going to do? He's just going to bankrupt <laughs> it straight away. I mean, uh, so how do we let people take ownership of terms like Islam, Muslim, Quran, Muhammad online? We've been lazy. It, it mm. fundamentally boils down to we've just been lazy. We've just been very apathetic towards mm. it. We've just assumed somebody else is going to do it. It's mm. always somebody else's responsibility, not mm. our own. It's not. Is it because we haven't got the resources? Maybe. No. We have many, many well, resources. Aren't we? we're, we're quite poor, aren't we? we Muslims no. are quite poor out there. <coughs> Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Kuwait. Subhanallah. You know, Indonesia. You know what, truly, well, not Indonesia. No, no. <laughs> uh, realistically, I think if you take all the wealth that is tied up within the Muslim lands, we could wipe out the debt that belongs to all the Muslim lands in one go. One Once go. the debt has gone, the West has no hold over the Muslim lands and we can be mm. independent. We, we own all the natural resources the the or so the majority not only that of we can get rid of world poverty just paying the just, zakah bro just pay the zakah and the system used to year. work the system used to work so it's not a case of lack of resources it's just a mm. case of lack of effort it's lack of effort or maybe that people are just frightened to ch to get outside their comfort zone what were we talking about anyway we were, so we, rudely were, uh, we were talking about the difficult questions and the problems, yeah. the problems. i mean fundamentally the problem always comes back down to Regardless of how you've answered the question, 
mm. unless you are very, very skillful, and I've never seen a person mm. of this caliber yet, uh, that a person, uh, hang on, it's a very, very difficult process just to answer this one question mm -hmm sufficiently well such that the person is going to take yeah. Islam. I've never yeah. come across anyone who's been able to do it. Mm. All that will tend to happen is once you've answered this question and you've satisfied the person on the answer, okay, fine. So this whole uh, uh, panigini rule, fine. Mm. I accept that there's a valid reason for it and yeah, fine, it makes sense. But they're not going to accept Islam from you. They may have another question. And each question begets another question, begets another question. And you just go into this endless circle where you just satisfying them on various points about Islam such that it makes sense, but you've never actually called them to Islam. Mm. So what we need to do is to adopt uh, a different methodology, a more faster streamlined methodology, mm. and also a methodology that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also Salam taught, Salam. you know, when uh, Muad ibn Jabal was uh, sent to speak to people. Yemen and, yeah. and many other companions. Many other places. Yeah. What did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi advise him? He said that you're gonna, you are going to people, uh, people who know of the, the book, book uh, so call them first to Tawheed. And this should be our methodology. Let's mm. call people to Tawheed first. And this is uh, where we implement a system that was developed by Sheikh Abdurrahim Green. Over a period of 30 years actually in the Dawah with yeah. people like, notable people like Sheikh Bilal Phillips yeah. and Sheikh Yusuf Estes and Actually. Hundreds of other, <laughs> I mean, to, to mention just two of a, a, yeah. a growing band of people, yeah. of course, who are being it's banned all over the world as well, yeah. I might add. Yeah, unfortunately, but... Uh, May Allah grant them success, I mean. Inshallah, I mean, and the, I think the internet is kind of breaking down the barriers anyway, so... It's, it's doing inshallah. some work. It's doing some know. work. But the point to being, be sure. this... <laughs> <laughs> the point being, this go rap system, it's a tried and tested mechanism. Okay. So what we need to do is, rather than <coughs> answering all the questions, we need to switch to using this mechanism. So this is a tried and tested system. Yeah. Uh, it's been utilized, you know, by many uh, da'is all around the world. And what we need to do is to switch from answering all these difficult questions one after one, one after one, one after one. Yeah. Uh, and switch to using the whole Gorap technique. Why? Because Gorap it takes the person through the process of calling the person to Islam. The idea being that regardless of whatever questions this person has, if you call the person to Islam, if they've understood the basic concepts of Islam and they accept the basic tenets of Islam, every other question by default mm. disappears. Yeah. Because once they've accepted Islam as the truth, then it doesn't really matter, you know, uh, why Islam does this or why Islam does that or is it not unfair, it's mm. not, you know. Because if they've accepted it's from Allah, fine. There must be a wisdom there that they don't mm. know yet. And then the question is more a case for, right, let's gain some knowledge. Mm -hmm. But once they've already accepted Islam, you've got another new brother, a new sister in Islam who can, you know, inshallah, help you spread it further. So yeah. that's basically, that's the, the, the that's whole Gorab technique. That's in a nutshell. Uh, just to go over as well, what does Gorab stand for? Because uh, I know people may yeah, not be familiar with they it. They might not want to even tune in unless you explain that, brother. All right, let's explain what it goes. <coughs> it stands for God, Oneness, Revelation and prophethood. So regardless of what the question is, and we'll discuss this uh, inshallah in a future episode, how to go through it, but it means you bring the whole subject back to discussing, first of all, God. Is there a creator? Does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exist? Then we discuss the oneness of Allah. I, yeah. uh, once we've established that there is a creator, he is one, we establish the need for revelation, and then we establish the prophethood of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in that, once they've accepted all of those tenets, mm -hmm. they accept Islam, everything is fine, hunky-dory, you, you take a shahada, inshallah, and all the questions are, for the most part, mm -hmm. swept away under the carpet and don't need to be addressed until a later time. Jazakallah khair, brother Jem Shady, and we're going to be finishing this program on that note of the go rap, and it's certainly goodbye from me, and it's goodbye from him. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.